Welcome to Alaska Weather. This is Eric calling with the National Weather Service for May 19, 2022. A couple options for you. 1-800 number gets you into the phone menu system and out on the World Wide Web, weather.gov slash Alaska. Lastly, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at the email list at the bottom of the page. On the breakup map, we still have a watch out for the lower Yukon, and that's through Friday evening, a large jam just upriver from Grayling has a lot of water behind it and if that should release residents in Grayling, Anvik, Holy Cross and Russian Mission could see a large volume of water. Otherwise larger rivers across the state are seeing the continued breakup process into late spring early summer otherwise some of the northwest and north slope rivers are continue to show signs of breaking up as well with some open leads there. And there's the watch out again that's through Friday evening so be looking for that otherwise across the state not much else is going on but I do want to mention that there is a special weather statement out for increased snow melt and rising water levels temperatures as you'll see on the surface map will be rising into the 60s and lower 70s over the next few days and will increase higher elevation snow melt across the central and eastern interior bringing water levels up Taking a look at the satellite imagery, you can see a ridge of high pressure centered just off the west coast there, driving clockwise flow, some scattered clouds and some showers in the interior, otherwise some snow showers along the north slope. Also, we'll see a low pressure system on the surface map beginning to show up there just south of Alaska Peninsula, driving some rain and rain showers across that area otherwise pretty quiet across state the surface map 1030 millibar ridge of high pressure just off the Seward Peninsula near the Bering Strait fog associated with that high pressure also as we saw in the satellite information fog and snow across the north slope and Arctic coast otherwise ridge in the Gulf of Alaska bringing nice weather to the panhandle and there's that system just south of the Alaska Peninsula with an occluder front, 1,000 millibars there, some rain showers, moderate, just uh, south of the Alaska Peninsula in the Gulf. For tonight's weather, the ridge continues, and this will be the same over the next couple days. 1,031 millibars there in extreme eastern Russia, otherwise a thermal low developing uh, this afternoon into this evening over the eastern interior, into the eastern Brooks Range, otherwise 996 millibar low. With a weakening occluder front associated with that system, driving some rain through the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula, otherwise very nice across the southern mainland into the Panhandle. And Friday's weather, high pressure continues to dominate with a weakening low just south of the Alaska Peninsula, trough. You even have some moderate to heavy rain showing up there on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula into Kodiak Island, otherwise snow showers across the Arctic coast there with onshore flow and then for Saturday's weather looking at the ridge high pressure continue to dominate and that weakening low now just off the eastern Aleutians otherwise some moderate rain continues in Kodiak Island through Bristol Bay with some rain in there fog along the Arctic coast and continue nice weather in the panhandle. For low temperatures we're going to be looking at Temperatures at Ketchikan 44, Sitka 42, 39 in Juneau, 34 in Yakutat, 44 in Anchorage, Talkeetna 38, McGrath 42, Kodiak 51. And then for high temperatures Friday afternoon, 67 in Ketchikan, 64 in Sitka, 67 in Juneau, 67 in Anchorage, 51 in Kodiak, 61 in King Salmon, 73 in McGrath. 
Then for low temperature Saturday morning, 42 in Ketchikan, 42 in Sitka, 38 in Juneau. Looking at Valdez, 42, 44 in Anchorage, 40 in Talkeetna, 39 in Kenai, 44 in Kodiak, King Salmon, 38, 39 in McGrath. High temperatures Saturday afternoon, 66 in Ketchikan, 62 in Sitka, 66 in Juneau, 65 in Haines, 61 in Valdez, 66 in Anchorage, 50 in Kodiak, King Salmon, 58, 71 in McGrath, and 70 in Talkeetna. Then up to the North Slope and East Interior locations for Friday morning. Low temperatures looking at 42 in Fort Yukon, 35 in Eagle, 43 in Fairbanks, Anatovic Pass, 28, Ukiavik, 28, 38 in Nome, 43 in Galena, 39 in Tanana. Four high temperatures Friday afternoon, look at those 70s, 66 in Fort Yukon, 68 in Eagle, 71 in Fairbanks, Anatovic Pass, 45, 33 in Ukiavik. 60 in Nome, 71 in Galena, 73 in Tanana. For a low temperature Saturday morning, looking at 40 in Fort Yukon, 39 in Eagle, 43 in Fairbanks, Anaktuvik Pass, 27, 24 in Ukiavik, 42 in Nome, 41 in Galena, 36 in Tanana. For high temperature Saturday afternoon, 70s continue with Fort Yukon, 70, 70 in Eagle, 72 in Fairbanks, Anaktuvik Pass, 42. Ukiavik for 31, 56 in Nome, 75 in Galena, 74 in Tanana. For low temperatures Friday morning, looking for the southwest region, Askinis and Aleutians, looking at 39 for Bethel, 40 in Antioch, Dillingham, 40, Cold Bay, 39, Dutch Harbor, 40, Shimia, 38, St. Paul, 32. For high temperatures Friday afternoon, 65 there in Bethel, 67 in Antioch, 60 in Dillingham, 46 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor, 45, 41 in Shimia, 41 in St. Paul. And for low temperature Saturday morning, looking at 42 at Bethel, 43 in Antioch, 40 in Dillingham, 38 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor, 40, 37 in Shimia, 34 in St. Paul. For high temperatures Saturday afternoon, 61 in Bethel, 64 in Antioch, 56 in Dillingham, 47 in Cold Bay. 47 in Dillingham, 42 in Shimia, 42 in St. Paul. Then for the temperature outlook for CP, from CPC Climate Prediction Center, 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from May 25th through May 29th, we're going to be looking at above normal tilts across such much of the Bristol Bay region and turning to near normal as you get further out on the end of the Alaska Peninsula but otherwise normal conditions possible across much of the Aleutians as we head back towards the mainland near normal conditions expected across much of the western mainland then turning to Below normal tilts across the eastern mainland and extending up into the Brooks Range and North Slope. And then looking at below normal tilts favored for much of the southeast. Then for CPC's 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook for May 25th through May 29th, we're going to be looking at below normal tilts for precipitation across much of the Bristol Bay region and the Kodiak Island. And that probably extends down in through the Aleutians as well. And then near normal precipitation probabilities across much of the western mainland extending up into the Arctic coast. Otherwise, as you get to the eastern Arctic coast, looking at above normal tilts coming back for precipitation. And a good chance of precipitation in the 6 to 10 day across the Fairbanks region and eastern interior. Near normal tilts near the uh, northern gulf region and that extends over into the panhandle as well but otherwise looking at some pretty nice weather the next couple days please enjoy it hi everyone i'm jess sano with the alaska pacific river forecast center here to give your may 19th 2022 alaska breakup outlook and update Right now we have a flood advisory for Glen Allen and a flood watch for Grayling 
and this will be our final update this season. There are three things to consider when predicting breakup. That's ice thickness and strength, snowpack, and the spring weather patterns. Late April and early May temperatures will control our snowmelt rates, thermal integrity of the ice, and the type of breakup, whether that's mechanical or thermal. Even though we are moving towards the end of breakup, uh, snowmelt flooding can still occur two to three weeks post breakup. So stay alert for snowmelt flood warnings in your area. We are expecting a pretty above average flood potential for snowmelt due to the high amount of snowpack we received this year. There is an active flood advisory out for Glen Allen right now because of this. We are expecting warmer than normal temperatures in the Fairbanks area, which is going to increase our chances for snowmelt flooding. Um, so if you're in the area, keep an eye out for high water in the area, especially around the Chena. Right now we have a flood advisory out for Glen Allen and also a flood watch on the lower Yukon. The Kuskokwim and the Tanana are mostly open to open. We are not expecting any more breakup or ice jams to occur on the, that river. Um, the Chena is also open, but there is a high potential for snowmelt flooding. Uh, the Yukon River is mostly open to some open, and again, we're not expecting any more ice jams for this area. The Northern Rivers are still mostly ice, so keep an eye out for any active breakup or ice jam that may occur on those rivers. We will be monitoring them, especially around Buckland, and we will post our, web, our findings to our website, and we keep this map updated 24-7. So again, Grayling and the surrounding area are experiencing some overbank flooding to, due to an ice jam. Um, the last community call for the Yukon will be on Monday and notes from this call will be added to River Notes on the River Forecast Center's website. We did experience a lot of ice jamming this season. On the Kuskokwim, we saw jams near Sleepmew and Red Devil McGrath and Crooked Creek, uh, Manly Hot Springs was flooded by the Tanana, and Circle and Grayling on the Yukon um, also had ice jams as well as high water in several areas. Overall, we had a very active and dynamic breakup season. Northern rivers, including Buckland, are starting to show signs of breakup, but have not done so yet. We will be monitoring these areas. So again, keep an eye on our website or Facebook and Twitter pages. And just as a reminder of our flood products, a flood warning means to take action as the hazard flooding is imminent or already happening. A flood watch means to be prepared, conditions are favorable for a specific hazard or event, and flood advisory, which means be aware it may cause an inconvenience or some nuisance flooding. And as always, we need your observations. If you live near one of these major rivers, visit our website and submit an observation at www.weather.gov APRFC. Email us at nws.ar.aprfc at noaa.gov. Give us a call at 907-266-5160 or 1-800-847-1739. You can always check the status of the rivers on our breakup map found on our homepage, and also any weather forecasts and products are at www.weather.gov ARH. Our Facebook is U.S. National Weather Service Alaska, and our Twitter is at NWSAPRFC. Again, this is our last update uh, via video message this season, uh, so thanks for tuning in, and again, keep an eye out for any active flooding in your area. Thanks, everyone. What are the Trojan asteroids? Well, let's begin by going back over 4 billion years when the newly formed solar system consisted of trillions of tiny little rocky and icy objects. Many of these objects came together to form the planets. 
the majority of the others were scattered into the distant reaches of our solar system and beyond, but not all of them. Some of them are pristine asteroids that now orbit with Jupiter in two huge swarms leading and trailing the planet. They're known as the Trojan asteroids. They're really, really mysterious, and we think that they come from the outer solar system. They're also really special in terms of understanding the evolution of the solar system and understanding the evolution of the planets because they have remained gravitationally stable for over billions of years. And astronomers have only been able to study these distant and enigmatic small bodies from Earth. But all of that is about to change. NASA's Lucy mission will embark on a 12-year journey to visit these primitive asteroids. And it's going to be really exciting because it'll be the first time that we are able to see these objects up close. So what are the Trojan asteroids? They're asteroids that orbit with Jupiter around the sun that ultimately hold the clues to the formation of our solar system. Howdy star homies, this week we've got a ton of conjunctions and it's gonna be spectacular, so let's hit the darkness and see them. Here we are at 5.30 a.m. on Sunday the 22nd looking southeast. Mark this spot because you're coming back here a bunch all week. Sunday the moon will make a conjunction with Saturn. And throughout the week it'll scooch past Jupiter and Mars on Tuesday and Wednesday and then Venus on Friday. Next week you can pop back out and see Jupiter and Mars in conjunction. That's next Sunday. Even though planets are far from each other, they appear close together because they orbit on the same orbital plane around the sun as the Earth. It's like standing on the edge of a racetrack. The sprinters on the other side look really close together, but they're all in different lanes. Now you can follow these planets as they sprint around the solar system. Grab your friends, share these conjunctions with them, and keep looking up. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the flying weather for Friday morning for the aviation forecast. We're looking at IFR conditions across some of the northwest coast there, otherwise marginal conditions further inland. Across the north slope down through the Seward Peninsula as high pressure continues to dominate the state. Northerly flow across the north slope bringing some lower clouds and lower ceilings up there. Otherwise, the Myofar conditions down through the central part of the Bering Sea and through the eastern Aleutians. Otherwise, again, pretty good flying conditions across the mainland, midsection of the state, down through the Panhandle. For <clears throat> Friday afternoon, looking at continued IFR conditions along the Arctic coast. Otherwise, IFR conditions through the central Bering Sea over into the eastern Aleutians into the Alaska Peninsula as a low begins to show up just south of the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, continued good flying con conditions for much of the mainland and into the southeast. Flying weather for Saturday morning. Again, continued good flying weather across much of the mainland and down through the panhandle. Otherwise, some IFR conditions and marginal conditions across the North Slope and Arctic Coast. Otherwise, marginal conditions down through the Eastern Bering, limited areas of IFR through the Central Bering, through the Central Aleutians. Otherwise, some IFR conditions showing up there at Kodiak Island, south side of the Alaska Peninsula. Good flying continues continuing into Saturday afternoon with marginal conditions along much of the North Slope, IFR conditions along the Arctic Coast. IFR conditions in the central bearing, marginal conditions down through much of the bearing in into Lucians, and continued IFR conditions associated with that low, moving into the Gulf along Kodiak Island, south side of Alaska Peninsula. Past conditions, only thing we need to really worry about is along the Brooks Range and Activic Pass, and that again will be VFR. Decreasing to marginal, otherwise some marginal conditions along the north entrance, and same for Adigan. Otherwise, all the passes in the southern mainland and into the panhandle will be VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill VFR, Rainy VFR, Windy VFR, Isabel VFR, Mentasta VFR, Tanita VFR, 
Portage VFR and the Panhandle passes white and Chilkoot VFR conditions. For freezing levels Friday morning, looking at the surface freezing level cutting across the Brooks Range and into Canada, otherwise an area of surface freezing levels over there in the southeast interior, Copper River Basin area and into the northern Panhandle, otherwise elevated freezing levels anywhere between two and 6,000 feet across much of the mainland and uh, across into the southwest and Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, above 6,000 feet over the panhandle. Icing conditions for Friday looking between 6 and 10,000 feet with isolated moderate areas over the north slope and down through much of the Aleutians and southern Bering Sea. Otherwise, no icing expected on Friday across much of the mainland and into the panhandle. Jet stream on Friday looking at high pressure in the Gulf with the jet streak just south of the the southeast panhandle looking at anywhere between 120 and 135 knots south of the panhandle otherwise more northerly flow coming across the north slope 70 to 85 knots there otherwise southerly flow around a low pressure system just south of the Aleutians bringing anywhere between 40 and 50 knots across the Bristol Bay region for 9,000 foot winds on Friday again low pressure system near the Aleutians, bringing several flow up into the Bristol Bay region, anywhere between 60 and 65, and even 35 to 40 across much of the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. Otherwise, no, more northerly flow across the North Slope, 35 knots up there, light and variable across the Panhandle. Four 3,000 foot winds on Friday, again, low pressure system, counterclockwise flow, anywhere between 50 and 60 knots in the Bristol Bay region, otherwise light and variable with high pressure dominating the state and the panhandle for turbulence on friday looking between anywhere between the surface and 4,000 feet over much of the bristol bay region with that low pressure system i did go for isolated severe in some of those areas extending over even into kodiak island but otherwise pretty nice flying conditions across the state and now marine weather around alaska Taking a look at the marine forecast, starting with the ice edge, some openings developing through the Bering Strait and off the northwest coast with some lower concentrations there. Also some lower concentrations from yesterday look like over there in the Gulf of extreme eastern Russia. Otherwise some decreasing concentrations through Norton Sound as well. Friday's marine forecast for southeast, inside waters, winds generally from north Westerly direction, 10 to 15 with seas as high as 3 feet. And for the outside waters, winds from the northwest as well, 10 to 15 with seas as high as 5 feet. Saturday's marine forecast for southeast. Inside waters, winds variable in direction, 10 to 15, seas as high as 3 feet. Outside waters, winds generally from a variable direction at 15 to 20 with seas as high as 7 feet. Marine forecast for south central, looking at variable directions in Prince William Sound up to 10 with seas as high as 2 feet. In the Gulf region winds generally from a easterly direction 10 to 15 or 10 to 25 with seas as high as 8 feet so look for small craft advisory there on Friday and for the Cook Inlet region looking for winds generally from a easterly direction 10 to 25 with seas as high as 7 feet and for Saturday's marine forecast Gulf region Looking at winds generally from the east at 20 to 35 with seas as high as 14. So look for gales there on Saturday. And for the Cook Inlet region, gen winds generally from a easterly direction 15 to 30 with seas as high as 10 feet. So look for a small craft there near Kamishak Bay. Friday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island. Around Kodiak Island, winds generally from the east at 30 with seas as high as 14 feet. Again, look for gales there on Friday. In the south side of the Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from the east at 30 with seas as high as 14 feet. So look for small craft or gales there. And for the north side of the Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from the east at 30 with seas as high as 6 for looks for small craft advised you there on Friday. Saturday's marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island. Around Kodiak Island, winds generally from a easterly direction 25 to 30 with seas as high as 11 feet. So look for gale force 
winds there on Saturday in the south side of Alaska Peninsula winds generally from an easterly direction 20 to 25 with seas as high as 9 feet and north side of Alaska Peninsula winds from the east at 25 to 30 with seas as high as 6 feet for Alaska Peninsula I'm sorry Lawson chain on Friday winds generally from a northerly direction 20 to 30 with seas as high as 14 there in the eastern end of the Lucians so look for small craft or gales there on Friday and for Saturday winds generally from a northerly direction 15 to 25 with seas as high as 8 feet so look for small craft advisory there on Saturday over there in the western Aleutians for the west coast Friday looking at winds generally from a northeasterly direction 15 to 30 with seas as high as 9 feet there near the Pribs so look for small craft advisory there on Friday and then for Saturday winds generally from the east at 15 to 25 with seas as high as 8 feet near just off the southwest coast for Friday's marine forecast for Arctic coast near the Beaufort Sea coast winds generally from the west at 15 to 20 down through the Chukchi Sea coast winds 10 to 15 from a southerly direction and down through the Bering Strait winds from a northerly direction 15 with seas up to three feet just south of the Bering Strait. Saturday's marine forecast for the Arctic coast, Beaufort Sea coast, looking at winds generally from a variable direction 10 to 15, down to the Chukchi Sea coast, winds generally from a northerly direction 20 to 25, and down through the Bering Strait, winds from the northerly direction 20 to 25, with seas as high as five feet down through the southern end of the Bering Strait. For tonight's weather, looking at high pressure to dominate, and it's going to continue for the next couple of days, otherwise a low approaching from the south near the eastern Aleutians brings a weakening cooler front and shower associated with that system. Moderate rain out in the Gulf and thermal low in the eastern interior, otherwise some lingering snow showers along the Arctic coast and in the north slope. Very nice flying weather across much of the southern mainland into the Panhandle. And that continues into Friday. High pressure continues to dominate. 1,030 millibars in the Gulf region. Nice weather through much of the mainland in the southeast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank <laughs> you.